Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecaster, here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, April 6, 2020. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY, or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, it's pretty obvious what jumps off the chart at all of us should be the C leg of the ABC pattern that we've been discussing for days and days and days. How does that look? It looks like this. A leg up, B leg down, C leg up. It's officially complete because we got above the high of the A leg. That doesn't mean the market can't go higher. It just means this pattern is no longer discussed. It's over. Finito. Complete. Forget about it. The question now becomes, is the market going to go higher in the near term, in the immediate future? And the answer is, we don't know. Anything goes. We're in an environment where there's plenty of reasons why the market shouldn't have even went up today. Let's discuss one of the reasons or multiple reasons why it did. The sentiment was very, very bearish. That's a standard garden variety recipe for a short squeeze. That's item number one. Everybody was expecting new lows. We discussed it many times last week. We weren't expecting new lows. Remember what we said? Around 240 was about it. That was really all I was expecting if we even got down there on the south side. That was going to be the bottom or near the bottom of the B leg, and that would provide a launch pad for the C leg or the beginning of the C leg. So they started it early. They never got to the 240. What is that? Bearish or bullish behavior? That's bullish behavior not being able to pull back even more than they did. That in and of itself represents some kind of bid under the market. Then we had something else on the board and traders that have taken the class, the course at Lazy E-Mini Trader, will recognize from the time the market ran up to that 263, it did something we discuss in detail in the course before making a resuming move higher. What we'll say about it is time is more important than price. We also alluded to that last week as well. So what do we do with all this? Well, here's what we have up above. I put some trend lines, or in this case, resistant points or potential resistant points on the board. We had these on before. If the market's going to continue up in the near term, this doesn't apply for three weeks from now. It applies for a day or two or three from now. The 271.5 to 274.36... This is an area where under normal garden variety market conditions, you would find overhead resistance. Is there any magic to these numbers? No, there isn't. The 271.48 represents a pivot high. That's the market telling you that that price is important. In this case, it also represents a gap window. It's the beginning of the area where the gap exists before it gets filled. Where does it get filled? 274.36. What's the next price up above? The 281. That's near the high of a breakdown candle. We just used the round number 281, give or take, but that is a breakdown candle high or near a high. So these are the numbers that were focused on from a 30,000 foot view looking down. During the trading day, inside the numbers have a refined approach. They have refined numbers based on what the market's doing in real time. And by the way, from the email indicator, and this is a little bit of a different twist on the email indicator, but today's email indicator, the flood into the inbox, is an indicator that there were a lot of traders that made a lot of money playing the C leg of this pattern. Great job to all those participants. Out of everybody I got an email or some kind of communication from today, there was one individual that was surprised at the move. There's always one that ends up being on the other side. And what did that individual do? That individual placed blame on me for getting his pie in the face. So just to double check, if I'm the one that was crazy and everybody was looking for lower prices coming into this week, even though we were looking for a low either the end of last week into Monday or at latest Tuesday of this week, and that was stated in the video, but if anybody was surprised or they think that I'm crazy, go ahead and make a post 
under the video and tell me that I was wrong. What about inside the numbers today? We'll actually work backwards. We'll start with stocks on the move. Why? Because today was a trend day up. You had a gap and go for the most part. And I'm going to show you the commentary, but there really wasn't a lot of juicy, gotta be in this trade type of stuff as it relates to the S&P. If you weren't already in, it was a little bit difficult to buy the market where it opened and went to early in the day. As a result of gapping higher, we only had one trade on the board. Most of the stocks were getting an inflation boost like everything else. So when they don't put opportunity on the board, we don't try and create it out of thin air. We take what she gives. What did she give today? She gave Zoom. We'll take a look at the chart in a moment. First, I'll run through the commentary so that you can see what was what. Right, wrong, or indifferent, good, bad, or ugly, I'll show you what happened. I'm not going to read it to you. I'm not going to babysit the notes. Basically, you can start and stop the video at your leisure. You know that already. What I'll do is I'll just scroll around and I'll periodically pause. There was no magic today. There was just numbers, important numbers, important zones, what was likely to happen. So there were a couple of things that some traders certainly did benefit from, like the end of the day jam session. You'll see that as we go through the notes up into the afternoon time frame. Let me continue scrolling. I almost forgot to scroll as I was babbling on. We were looking for a mid-morning pivot, 9.52, you'll see that. Now, when we start looking for a mid-morning pivot, depending on what type of day it is, we get the sense for whether or not it's going to be an eat the time off your clock day, meaning just run sideways for a while, then make an ensuing move or a continuation move higher, or are they going to have a big fat pullback? So that's what we're looking for with the mid-morning pivot. They put one in a little bit early. They were basically bullish all day long. It was a short covering rally. It was a pie in your face. It was an inflation rally. It was everything's going to be okay. It was everything's going to be fine. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel from the coronavirus pandemic. And obviously I say a lot of this tongue in cheek. But what happens is buying begets buying. Panic buying sets in. That's short covering. Short covering drives price higher. FOMO kicks in. What's FOMO? Fear of missing out. When the traders hop on the board to satisfy their FOMO need, they in turn drive price higher. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You'll see at 218, I had my eye on a specific area in order to get long if they pulled back to that area. They didn't pull back to that area but we were expecting the end of the day jam session anyway, and that's certainly what we got. Just so you can see, 218, you can see here, they'll find some afternoon support, and if they're going out bullish, don't be surprised to see an end of the day jam session finishing on the highs. It's an awareness. If you see them start to ramp up near the end of the day, it's a jam session underway under normal garden variety market conditions. Here's a five minute chart of the SPY. What did the jam session look like? Well, you can see here this candle at ending at 1550 or 350 in the afternoon closed at 363.78. The high two candles later before the close is 267. That's a tremendous jam session into the end of the day. Why did it pull back so much at the end of the day? Because traders playing for the end of the day jam session are taking profits before the closing bell. That's what a trader does when he or she treats it like a business. When they hand you 30 S&P handles in a matter of minutes, you take it. Remember Zoom? So it's on the board, I don't know, maybe 7.30 or so a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We had two numbers on the board, 111.10 and 107.77. They never got to the second number, but you can see here that they closed Friday at 128.20. So in the midst of the haircut, we're trying to pick off an area where they're likely to what? Find it as a result of going to the destination, turn around, and go back the other way. Talk about that all the time. That's what these stocks are doing, day in, day out. What was the high of the day into the end of the day jam session? 125.17. What was the high just minutes after the market, or in this case, Zoom, found the low? How about 120.97? How about 10 bucks in a matter of minutes? How do you like them apples? Getting back to the daily chart, before we move on to other stuff, 
What's the other side? What's the south side? What do we have to look out for? How about a recapture on the south side of the highs that were just broken today? So the high of the A leg, which they attempted a couple, three times, right around 263 and change, give or take. Call it 263 for argument's sake. If you find the market trading back down below 263, closing hourly below 263, guess what? You likely have a failure on your hands. Now in real time, inside the numbers members will have the deal, at least from a reading the tape perspective. But from the night before, for example, looking in, that's what you have to watch out for. Looking at the hourly chart, does it provide any additional information that we don't know? Not really. You can look at 263 and the same deal applies. You don't want to be, if you're bullish, you don't want to be back down below 263. And as long as we're above 263, where are they headed? They're headed to the 271.48. How are they going to get there? Will they have fits and starts? Will the trick trap fool and frustrate crew show up? Of course they will. Remember, the market's job is to make as many traders and investors look like fools as much of the time as possible. That's just the way it works. What's going on in Camp IWM? Above the 20 period moving average have yet to fill a gap. You can see here that this gap will basically be filled 114.50, 114.60 in that neighborhood. Came up about a buck short today. Under normal garden variety market conditions, we would expect this gap to be filled. We had relative strength in the IWM today, up over 7% against an SPY that was up under 7%. Not a tremendous amount of relative strength, but relative strength nonetheless. Why do I care? Because it's my favorite market leading indicator. Do you see anything else a little bit strange on this chart? Well, if you don't, let me point it out. So there actually is relative weakness from a longer term perspective on this chart. Let me explain what I'm looking at. So you have this day here from the 26th and the high is 117.60. If we did the same exercise that we ran with the SPY, the numbers are different. The day's prices between the IWM and the SPY are not the same. However, this is the IWM's ABC pattern. Well, guess what? They have yet to get to the high of the A leg. So we have a lagging index. Not to say they won't, but it's an awareness we must have because if the market, meaning all across the market, all the indices turn back down, this will have been a potential canary in the coal mine. Relative weakness on the daily chart from a longer term perspective in the IWM, today, one day, relative strength. It's important to make the distinction between the two. Today, we need to take a look at the VIX because there's something else that's important on the VIX. Now, remember, we have to be the umpire. We have to look at the market in total, objectively, around the entire market, looking around the horn, going through a variety of different markets, a variety of different charts. In doing so, we look at the VIX. Now, this thing looks entirely different than everything else we've looked at thus far. Let me explain what I'm looking at. Take a look at when the high was made in the VIX. Go back to the content from the Lazy E-mini Trader course. Think about time is more important than price. Take a look again at the VIX and tell me if something doesn't seem a little off when we look at the VIX and we look at the other indices have we completed the ABC pattern and we're going to turn back down or will the VIX continue down farther into the 50 period moving average, which is the blue trend line at around 38 and a half. The market was up tremendous today. The VIX was down 3%. If you look at both sides of the market, you would say the VIX right here right now is telling me that its probabilities are short term for higher prices rather than lower prices that's a short-term deal but it's on the table it's a puzzle piece on the table now take a stop down at the transportation department and we have somewhat of a similar situation that we have in the iwm so this is my number one favorite canary in the coal mine number two favorite market leading indicator so here's what we have when you start to package this stuff together you start to go full stack. You have 
the S&P 500 that completes the ABC pattern. Officially completes it. Doesn't mean the market can't go higher, but the pattern is done. Then you have the IWM that had relative strength today, but is lagging from a daily chart perspective, the S&P 500. The transports, same routine. Lagging the S&P 500. The VIX, telling me that under normal garden variety market conditions, if I'm painting by the numbers, I'm not going to be short the VIX. I'm looking for, at least from a short-term perspective, higher first rather than lower. No collapse in volatility today as the market was up 6-7%. Really? What's wrong with that picture? Let's move it along. What do we have when we go out to Silicon Valley and we take a look at the tech folks? We have another ABC completion. And that makes sense because it's more likely the Qs look more like the SPY than they don't. So it seems to fit in with the storyline. Bottom line, I would focus on the SPY and at least from a bird's eye perspective, use the 263 as a guideline if the market's trading down Tuesday morning. If it's trading in the other direction, they're going to some of the numbers we discussed before. What happens when we look at the XLF? Well, we see something that looks very similar to the IWM and the transports. Now, here's another part of the equation. Because there's divergences, we have to be aware that the XLF, the IWM, the transports can certainly catch up to the SPY and the Qs, for example. And obviously, at the same time, if that's happening, those indices are continuing higher to some of what? The numbers cited earlier. Just because we have a divergence today doesn't mean the divergence won't resolve itself. We have to look at both sides of the market. By the way, to answer the question, and this is for the bears out there that have already hit the dislike button, is the market just going to continue up indefinitely and not go ahead and retest lows, make a new low, something like that? And the answer is no will be back but you have to accept and trade for the market that's in front of you today we talked about some of the sentiment things before we talked about the fact that things would start to appear that they're going to get better they're not going to be as bad or appear as bad as they might have let's say a week earlier you're starting to see some of that develop now it will swing back and forth but as the market continues higher people begin to look for more reasons why things are going to get better sooner than we thought, quote, unquote. That's just the way things work. It's the way they look at the economy. It's the way they look at earnings reports. It's the way they look at crisis. It's always the same routine. How about good old Smash Mouth? The Philadelphia Semiconductor Index Proxy, the SMH. Tremendous day, up almost 10%. Completion of its abc pattern now the fact that something was up 10 percent today two things occur a it could certainly go higher but b it would be normal garden variety market behavior to have some kind of a retracement on our hands you don't know what you're going to wake up to from one day to the next we're just stating what's common normal garden variety market behavior using what the 80-20 rule. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you and that without you, these videos are not possible? It's all true and very accurate information. It's everything that I basically wanted to and intended to discuss tonight, so we will give it a wrap here. I will pull the rip cord. I am David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.